Hi everybody! Today there are seven new effects in one plugin. And this is the Tukan Studios Blacklight Modulation Series 2. So first of all, for all who are not too familiar with modulation effects, what it is, is a low frequency oscillator that changes a parameter. In the simplest case, you can imagine turning a volume knob up and down. And this would be a tremolo effect. So you can see, as this pointer moves over the time, we have much level and then the level drops until complete silence. And then the level rises again. So you see the modulation is influenced by the LFO, the low frequency oscillator, and this can be set up at the upper half of the plugin. So this box here is where we can see what our LFO is doing. And we see that it has the shape of a sine wave. And we can change that shape by clicking here. And we see some of the shapes. <laughs> the external shape will come to that at the end of the video. So we saw that sign. We can choose a flip, which will just turn the volume on and then off at a sudden point and then on again. We can use a ramp up, we can use ramp down, we have the shape of the triangle and then we have 8 step, 16 step and 64 step. So in 8 step it's flat all the way but you can now set your LFO in 8 steps where the pointer should go. In 16 step we of course have 16 steps where our pointer should go and in 64 steps it's nearly a free draw where you can choose where the pointer should go maybe like this. So maybe let's go back to the sine wave and we can see it's moving at a constant tempo. And the speed of the movement can be adjusted here. And if you think it's not fast enough, you can multiply this by 10. You could also say one turnaround of this should be maybe one bar of our music. <laughs> and funny enough, it's not one bar now, it's triolic, so we turn this option off, now it's one bar, we could set this to trios or to dotted notes. And we can change it from 8 bars, 4 bars, 2 bars, 1 bar and up to very fast speed. But for being able to see what's going on there, let's choose 4 bars and it will always begin at this zero line, then go up and then go down and up again. So if you want this to start at the highest point, you have to shift this wave and you can use this shift dial to do that. And now you can imagine we have a left and a right channel. Left is green and right is blue. So we can shift where the blue pointer should go. Well, so much about the LFO. Let's now hear how it can sound. So I set up a tremolo with the shape of the sine wave and we sync that to one bar. And now let's hear how it can sound. Well, I got one we re so maybe let's put that to quarter notes. Well, I got one by. And now let's shift the right channel by um, 180 degree. Well, I got one by. And now we have a panning effect. But we don't need this to have the panning effect. We have the auto pan, which is the second modulation effect here. We can set the um, tremolo and the auto pan with a dry wet amount. So let's set that to. 100%. Well, I got one by. The third effect would be a filter. So 
we can choose a low pass filter, we can set the filter Q and a center frequency and a drift. So um, now the filter will move from, let's say, 20 hertz up all the range, which would sound like this. Or we can reduce the shift and move up the center frequency so we don't have this heavy bass stuff. Well, I got one by. Maybe let's take trail leg notes this time. Shift the right channel. Well, I got one by. And here we can choose if we want to use a high pass, a band pass, an equalizer filter or a low pass. And with the equalizer filter, we also get this gain setting here. Well, I got one by. The next effect would be the phaser, which has the usual controls for a fader. Let's set that to six stages, as it can sound like this. Well, I got one by. Then we have the flanger. And we have a chorus effect. And for these um, filter and phaser, flanger and chorus effect, we can make stereo effects by shifting the right channel. So if we want this to be more a mono effect or a dual mono effect, we wouldn't shift the right channel. But if we choose to shift that channel, we have different modulation on the left and the right channel. And of course, you wouldn't always use this plugin on the master channel or on the main mix. We mostly use such effects on single tracks. So now I chose the guitar and again chose the sine wave and made a tremolo effect with eighth notes. Sounds like this. But for the fun, let's choose another shape. So maybe let's choose ramp up. Or we could use a slower phaser and do this with stereo mode. Let's hear a flanger again. Or a typical effect for guitars would be a chorus in stereo mode. Again without the chorus. and with the chorus on. The position of the LFO pointers is always related to the playback position of your project, so you will not get different results at every playback. Most LFOs are not project time based and you can switch that on and off here from the menu. The menu item above that can enable output automation. This now means nothing in terms of this plugin, but we can do funny things with that. So let's choose no audio effect from this plugin. So here now I have the orange EQ and I can touch a knob, let's say the um, bandwidth for this filter and then click parameters and parameter modulation. And here I can choose from MIDI or FX parameter and I can choose from the black light modulation the green pointer for example or let's choose the blue pointer. I enable this modulation and you can see now this knob moves together with the blue pointer and now we can see how interesting it can be having maybe some interesting shapes 
or let's see, a ramp up. Maybe let's modulate another parameter here. And we can set the um, amount and the offset for that parameter. And maybe we choose another form again, the sine wave, and make it a bit faster or slower. So if you wondered why I said there are seven new effects, well, there are six effects built in in this Black Life modulation, and the seventh effect is that you can modulate any plugin you like. So now we saw that parameter modulation thing, I can tell you something about this external. So internal would be with a filter maybe like this. And if we set that to external, maybe I make this a bit slower, we can now choose an external source for our green and blue pointer. So we go to the parameters list and from modulation media link, we can choose the green pointer. And now we can do the same thing in reverse. So we could use a Reaper's own um, LFO and maybe set that to a random shape. So you see now the green pointer moves somewhere with a random setup. We could change the speed for that. And let's do this again with the blue pointer. And now let's see what the filter does. And we can even modulate this directly from our audio. So let's get back to that green pointer and set audio control signal. Switch off that LFO. So now I've set this up to audio control signal and we use channel one, which is the left input. And we'll play around a bit with these parameters here. Um, I recommend using centered for controlling this plugin. And now both the green and the blue pointer are set to be controlled by the incoming audio signal. So we have a kind of auto filter, which can sound like this. Of course, this not only works with filters, so we could have an auto phaser depending on the audio. Well, that's basically what the Blacklight Modulation Series 2 is about. Well, of course, we have all these series two things like the processing thing and grouping and uh, no automatic scaling or automatic scaling. And um, we can scale this plugin by just dragging that window. We could type in some values. So maybe we want four hertz. We type four and now we have four hertz. We have plugin linking. And of course, we would have the MCP and TCP support. So today I chose TCP to show it, uh, which means that in this um, track control panel we see the modulation effect. And now we could choose another effect here. Now we set that to phaser. Maybe we want to have auto pawn. Maybe we want to have another shape. We can use um, click here and use another shape. And with holding shift and clicking it, we can bypass the plugin or unbypass it again. So at all, I think it's a quite inspirational effect.
and you'll all find out yourself what funny and crazy stuff you can do with that. So that's it for today. And as always, have fun with the plugins and bye bye.